Hello students, today we are going to discussing about uh, assessment of individuals. As we all know, uh, tax is levied on income of uh, all kinds of assessi. For the purpose of assessment, first we have to discuss about uh, individual assessi. While calculating total income of an assessi, we have to go through various heads of income and after that we have to consider the rate of tax and the slab which is applicable to different kinds of individual on the basis of their age and their residential status and we have to calculate his tax liability for the purpose of assessment. Let us discuss about uh, various things we have to consider while assessing an individual. Uh, already discussed about various uh, heads of income also there on different kinds of assessi. So out of individual assessi, company assessi, cooperative society, firm and so on. Today we have to discuss only about individual assessees. Then who is individual? Individual is nothing but a kind of person as per Income Tax Act 1961 is having the uh, living uh, evidence. So this individual assessee is also liable to pay tax on his income. Then what do you mean by tax? So we are already aware about that one. Tax is a uh, levy by the government on his income. It is a compulsory contribution made by the all kinds of assessee. Uh, that is on the basis of tax lab which is uh, usually prescribed by the respective assessment years uh, uh, finance act. Then uh, let us discuss about some steps we have to follow while assessing. Various steps are there, we will discuss one by one. The first step is so we have to compute the income of an individual under five heads as we all know. Uh, income from salary, house property, business or profession capital gain and other sources. The aggregate of all these kinds of heads uh, is called as gross total income. But in the first step we have to calculate the different heads of income that is the first step. Then second step after calculating this one we have to go for section 60 to 64 that is nothing but clubbing of income. Then what do you mean by clubbing of income? It is very simple. If I am having income I have to pay tax on my income. Sometimes I have to pay tax on my income along with my minor child income, my wife income and any other person who is belong to me and which is taxable in my hand. There are various uh, incomes are there which will be clubbed with my income. For example, minor child income. If minor child income is not taxable in his hand, it should be taxable in my hand. Sometimes uh, my wife income is there which is less than my income and which she is not uh, earn out of her uh, professional capacity that income should be included uh, in my income. So that is clubbing of income. So we have to concentrate clubbing of income is any that should be added to my gross total income. That is the second step. And the third step is set off and carried forward of losses. Then what do you mean by set off and carry forward of losses? Very simple. In the previous classes we already discussing about uh, calculation of different heads. In each head there is a chances of losses that loss can be set off against any other heads of income. If there is no other heads of income, same head income is there that can be set up. For example, I am having two house property. I am, I am having one house property income and loss from another house property. That loss can be set off against that first house property income that is within the head set off. Sometimes I do not have any other house. I have only one house. I have loss from house property that loss can be set off against say for example I am having salary income. So that can be set off that is called as set off and carry forward of losses. Sometimes what happen? I do not have any other heads of income. I am having only one head of income. I do not have income but I have loss. That loss can be carried forward to the next year. So it is depending upon the different kinds of uh, income or different heads of income. Separate provisions are there we already discussed while calculating different heads of income. So here I am uh, repeating that carry forward and set off has to be takes place while assessing individual income. Uh, carry forward of losses has to be taken if uh, last year losses is there if you are carried on this year we have to deduct if it is uh, losses there that can be deduct that is in the third step that is set off and carry forward of losses. Then fourth step after calculating all these things we will have one income that is called as gross total income. As per income tax act 1961 under chapter 6a there is eligibility for reducing the tax burden by applying some deductions. S that deductions is uh, comes under 80C to 80U which is applicable to individual assessment because we are discussing about assessment of individuals. So, then 
out of the step 1, 2, 3, what we have calculated, that amount has to be reduced by some deductions which is applicable to individual SSC. Uh, we already discussed in the previous class about what are the different heads of uh, income and what are the different uh, deductions from ATC like ATC, ATCCC, ATCCD, ATD, ATDD, ATDDB, ATG and so on. So, we have to concentrate only the deductions which is applicable to individual SSC. So, that is in the fourth step that is considered as deductions of that particular uh, either investments or expenditure or any of these savings that has to be deducted from the gross total income that is step 4. Then step 5, in this case we have to round off the amount because say for example uh, gross total income is there, some deductions are there, still we are having some uh, fractions. Then what do you mean by fractions? For example, uh, first example there is a gross total income minus deduction the amount is 456,896 rupees. The last 896 rupees is there now. So, that will be round off to the nearest 10 rupees. So, here what will be there? 456,896 that will be round off as 456,900 because it is more than 5 rupees now that is what. Another example suppose there is income of 365,434. So, while we are round off to the next nearest rupee, so we have to leave 4 rupees. So, it should be 3,65,430. So, this step, the step number 5 is there, no? that we have to round off the amount of total income for the purpose of calculation of tax liability. That is there in the Act 1961 Income Tax Act. So, in the step, uh, step 6, that is computation of tax on such total income on the basis of tax lab. So, come to the step 7, that is computation. First we have to calculate the tax, uh, the different slab rates are there on the basis of different uh, uh, age of an SSC, on the basis of his residential status also. That will be discussed in the next slide, but here I would like to say what is there in the step 7. In the step 7 we are have to allow some rebate under section 87 a that is most important this rebate is depending upon the assessment year. This class we have to discuss about the assessment year 2020-21. So, in this step we have to consider the rebate under section 87 a is allowed maximum of rupees 12,500. So, if his income is less than 5 lakh rupees that is eligibility of 87 a. So, maximum 12,500 rupees rebate under section 87 a if his income is less than 5 lakh. So, this is step 5 sorry step 7. Then step 8 adding surcharge, surcharge is 10 percent of uh, uh, tax if his income is exceeding 50 lakh and 15 percent of surcharge if income is exceeding 1 crore and obviously we have to add 4 percent health and education cess. Uh, up to here we have discussed some steps that is step 8 that is how we are going to assess individual uh, income. In the next class we will discussing about the remaining steps and how to calculate the tax on his income. Thank you.